This is Malik Hook from the University of Colorado, and I'll be talking today about one of the new devices that we've been working on in our laboratory. The title is CU Lacrimal System Drug Delivery Device, a new solution for ocular drug delivery. The CU Ophthalmic Device Innovation Lab is dedicated to the development of innovative approaches to address some of the unmet needs that we have identified in ophthalmology. Our team has a proven track record of putting medical devices on the market by way of both collaborations with existing companies as well as spinning out our own startup companies. The CU Lacrimal System drug delivery device was developed to address the unmet need of poor adherence and intolerance to chronically dosed topical ophthalmic therapeutics, which is what we use for the majority of the diseases that we treat like glaucoma, allergy, infections, etc. The technology is covered by issued patents from the University of Colorado with multiple patents pending both in the United States and internationally. The vast majority of ocular diseases are treated with topical medications, as I stated earlier. The drops are typically self-administered by the patient, and this leads to poor adherence that increases over time, as well as complexity of the therapeutic regimen. Some of the reasons for poor adherence include forgetfulness, frequency of dosing, physical limitations and cost, inability to identify the appropriate bottle, one of the major reasons is topical side effects. We also know that the majority of patients who receive a prescription for topical therapeutics don't refill the drops after six months. While topical therapeutics in the form of drops are the main therapeutic modality that we use in ophthalmology, we know that the ocular surface is receiving much more of the medication than is required. The ocular surface capacity for drops is approximately six to eight microliters, but each drop that we place on the eye typically has a volume of 30 to 50 microliters. This leads to overdosing with ocular side effects, both from the preservative as well as from the active ingredient. Despite this, the U.S. glaucoma topical medication market exceeds $4 billion. Worldwide, this exceeds $8 billion. There are 3.5 million patients suffering from glaucoma in the United States and tens of millions of patients suffering from glaucoma internationally. This all leads to a greater than $8 billion global revenue opportunity, which is why so many companies are interested in improving the current reality for all of the patients that we're treating. There have been several attempts at alternative delivery systems, including intracameral injections, ocular inserts like the Helios ring that you see in the middle picture here, as well as punctal plugs. Now, all of these alternative delivery systems carry with them some drawbacks, for the intracameral systems, there's unfortunately the risk of corneal endothelial loss due to mechanical damage from the free-floating pellet. The ocular inserts can be uncomfortable and the dosing can be irregular. And the punctal plugs have many drawbacks that I'll cover here in subsequent slides. There is, however, common ground in the field of ophthalmology that alternative delivery systems could fill an unmet need that initially may reside between the treatment algorithm of using medications and laser, but if done correctly, could potentially occupy the entire treatment delivery spectrum from early glaucoma to late stage. As mentioned earlier, punctal plugs for drug delivery is one of the alternative models that has been explored over the years. The lacrimal drainage system is a natural reservoir that can be accessed easily at the slit lamp and in a non-invasive manner. Punctal plugs are commonly used to block tear outflow through the lacrimal drainage system. This is used to treat dry eye. And punctal plugs are easily inserted, they're safe and comfortable, and the form factor of these plugs is well known over the past few decades. Using the punctum for a drug delivery reservoir has both pros and cons. On the pros side, it is non-invasive, it can be physician administered in the clinic, and is also patient independent, meaning that the patient is receiving the drug 100% of the time when the plug is in place. And this is where the cons come in. Unfortunately, retention of punctal plugs is poor, the retention has been studied extensively by the various companies who have punctal plug drug delivery platforms. And in most studies, the lower punctum retains the plug 65% of the time after a few weeks post-insertion. And the upper punctum retention is even worse at 50% after a few weeks. One of the other drawbacks is that the intraocular pressure lowering efficacy has been disappointing to date, with many studies showing efficacy less than timolol and only over a short period of time. This is thought due to the low carrying capacity of these plugs, where these active ingredients run out over a short period of time. And also these plugs are inactive, relying on tears to enter into the reservoir and then exit over the ocular surface before absorption 
in the setting of extreme dry eye, or as the reservoir is depleted, the drug exiting from the reservoir is inconsistent. This all results in a regulatory hurdle where if poor retention is present or if the efficacy is lower than some of the standards that act as a control in studies, the likelihood of regulatory success and approval is much lower. We believe we've come up with an approach to punctal plug drug delivery that addresses some of the drawbacks of previous systems. The system itself can be inserted at the slit lamp in typical fashion as what we do with punctal plugs today. The system enters into the punctum through the canalicular system and the distal end enters into the nasal lacrimal sac. A reservoir balloon is then inflated with medication, followed by withdrawal of the cannula, which plugs one lumen of the punctal plug and allows a second lumen to deliver medication to the ocular surface in a controlled manner. Here's a closer look at the actual drug delivery system. The system is dimensionally equivalent to conventional punctal plugs and again can be inserted at the slit lamp. The system itself, as I stated, has two lumens in the distal end. One lumen is used to inject the medication into the reservoir balloon, and the second lumen is how medication accesses the ocular surface at the level of the faceplate of the device. The balloon itself is distensible and acts as a reservoir that can hold multiple months of therapeutics. There is a proprietary gel matrix which controls elution rates, and this gel matrix can be tuned to match the desired elution profile for the various medications that are in the reservoir balloon. This approach solves the major drawbacks of past punctal plug approaches, including enhanced retention with the faceplate at the lid margin and the reservoir balloon in the nasal lacrimal sac. Essentially, the device is secured at both ends with a real possibility of 100% retention. And there's also consistent long-term delivery with a reservoir balloon containing significantly more medication than what is possible with past punctal plugs. There's been extensive preclinical testing done with partners, including Andy Schieber at Ingenierius, where models were created to investigate the form factor of the reservoir balloon. You can see here this reservoir balloon is filled with dye so that it can be visualized anatomically, the dimensions were mimicked so that we could study the device extensively prior to going into the clinic. And the studies were not just anatomical, but also testing the elution rate with customized systems to look at altering the flow rate, which is now verified to be tunable for different medications that need to be delivered at different rates. The balloon reservoir has also been studied extensively for stability with fluorescein showing that there is no leakage from the balloons while being able to directionally deliver the medication to the faceplate over a long period of time. This culminated in recent clinical testing where the systems were successfully inserted into multiple patients and in some cases kept in for multiple days to show comfort with bilateral insertion. This is giving us the evidence we need to continue exploring the system and to enter clinical trials with active therapeutics with the first target being glaucoma treatment targeting three to six months of delivery with comparisons versus an active control. The value proposition of the CU device is pretty clear with the ability to have constant elution and a dose rate that is adjustable depending on which disease we're targeting and which therapeutic we're using. The device is easily inserted and easily removable at the slit lamp. Again, multiple active pharmaceutical ingredients can be used depending on the disease that is being targeted. This results in a patient-independent platform where adherence is 100%. One of the main advantages of this system is that it is an office procedure that can be performed by both ophthalmologists as well as optometrists. And you can see some of the comparators, whether it's punctal plugs, extraocular depots, intraocular implants, or applicator sprays have drawbacks compared to the system that we've designed. In summary, the CU Lacrimal System Drug Delivery Device is a platform technology that can deliver multiple APIs. While glaucoma is the first target, other diseases such as allergy and conjunctivitis can also be addressed. And post-operative medications, for example, post-cataract surgery, can also be delivered in a patient-independent way. We've provided a solution to significant limitations that exist with topical drug delivery in a way that is accessible to both physicians as well as optometrists. The system is covered by multiple patents and there is a clear regulatory pathway for approval. And the question is, what should be the next steps? And that's the question that I'm asking you. I'd love to hear back from you about the thoughts that you might have on this system, where you think it might fit in your treatment algorithm, 
and what you think the potential might be in actual clinical practice. If you have any questions, please message me and I'd love to hear your thoughts.